So, before we get started, uh, I'd like to take a second. Uh, I'm wondering if Donna is around. If I, I'd like to invite Donna to come up and say a prayer. Thank you, Donna. Father, we praise you and thank you for this day. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with each one of us tonight. Lord, that you would quieten our hearts and that we would be able to hear what is brought to us by Steve Garvey. Lord, we know this world is totally upside down. And we thank you that you are the creator of this world. So you will right side it. Father, we just thank you and we leave this all. We ask for your hand of protection to be upon each and every one and upon Steve as he travels home. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Don. Okay, uh, just one quick second here. Just wanted to make sure that was still going. Okay, so <coughs> before we get started, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, so this event is being put on by a group known as the Voices of Lloyd Mincer, and uh, we're a local advocacy group in collaboration with uh, the Lloyd Mincer Watchdog, which is a municipal advocacy group which deals directly with uh, council issues and things happening at City Hall. Uh, so when you came in, we asked you to, if you'd be willing to put your name on our list so we can send you some emails and updated information, as well Stephen will have some extra links and some information about his research that we'd like to send out to you. So if you haven't signed up already, I, I ask that you uh, put your name and uh, email address over on the list over here. Uh, also, we're also accepting donations tonight. Uh, we do have some expenses. We want to make sure Stephen has his expenses covered. We also want to make sure we donate enough to the church, uh, to the ark. So, if you uh, are so, would be so gracious as to provide a donation, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Steve was here to talk about an issue that has been no doubt contentious over the last couple of years. And I got to experience that firsthand by posting the poster on Facebook. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when, when people call you out and want to make fun of you and call you names, then you must be doing something right. <laughs> so, our group, we've been involved in numerous issues around Lloyd. And one that's a hot topic right now, and one that's going to get become even hotter within our city, is the issue of 5G and EMF radiation that's being emitted from towers being erected around the city. If uh, over the last couple of years, there's also been a lot of fiber optics being installed around the city. For anybody who's noticed that, or who has signed up with TELUS for their, their fiber optic internet service. Well, there's more to it than just an internet service, and Stephen will touch on some of those topics tonight. Uh, but essentially, Blood is going to become a smart city, and a smart city is a city that is connected to everything wirelessly. And it's constantly collecting data on all of us. Da collecting data on your appliances, collecting data on your internet usage, collecting data on your water usage, power usage, and all that data is gathered together and then sold to the highest bidder. Your privacy, once it goes out of the hands of whoever's collecting it, your privacy really doesn't matter anymore. So we're Fortunately, it hasn't been fully implemented here yet, and uh, it works. It's going to get a lot worse. Uh, some cities across the country are fully engulfed in it, and and I know this is a conspiracy theory, and in fact, it's a conspiracy fact if you look at Edmonton right now. But it is being turned into a 15-minute city, and I know people don't like to hear that. I've been laughed in my face. I've had people in public laugh in my face. But that's what a 15-minute city is. It's a smart city divided into, into districts whereby they collect your data and they keep you within that area so that they know everything about you and you're supposed to be happy.
happy and own nothing. Mm -hmm. And high level of surveillance. And high level of surveillance. And 15 minute city doesn't mean you won't be allowed out of your 15 minute area, but you'll have to pay. And at first you'll pay, maybe a little tax, maybe some credits here and there. Eventually it'll be carbon taxes. And eventually you won't be allowed to leave because there's a public transit, which wouldn't you know it, Lloyd has been looking into implementing. So a public transit and living, working, and playing in your district is what the techno technocratic group throughout the world is trying to implement. So tonight Stephen is going to give us a, a broad taste on this. He's not going to be able to touch on everything because there's just too much. Uh, he's going to he spend the day here yesterday and today going around the city and checking out different areas, uh, levels of EMF radiation coming off of various devices and various points around town. He's, uh, he's got a presentation prepared here. I'm going to help him with that here shortly. Uh, but also, before we, before we get started here, I just want to get a hands up on who is from outside of Lloydminster. There's a large group of people here from outside. So, I want to thank everybody for coming. Everybody who came from outside of Lloyd and in Lloyd. Uh, what I'm trying to discover is how did you learn about this event? Did you see it online or did you see it on a poster? We're trying various different methods to try and get the word out. So with a show of hands, who saw it on a poster or a piece of paper? Okay, so there's a dozen, half a dozen, or eight to ten to twelve people, so that's great. Okay. How else did you see it? Yeah, how else did you see it? Did you see it on Facebook? Email. Email. Okay. And word of mouth. Little birdie told me. And little birdie told you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Smart so, birdie. Yeah. Smart yeah. birdie. So it looks like all the different methods that we're using seems to work. So uh, it looks like we'll continue using those in the future. With that, I don't want to take any more time from Stephen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand off the mic to him. Uh, basically, Stephen Garvey. Like I mentioned, he uh, is going to be doing a presentation. He's from Calgary, and uh, we're gracious to have him here teaching us a little bit about 5G and EMS. So here you go. I want to thank the voices of Lori Minster, incredible gem of this city, as far as I'm concerned. I've never come across a group so open-minded. Um, if I was here, I would definitely be a member, and I, I may be a distance member, just so you know that I'm, and I, and I say these words with utmost conviction about this group. I'm nonpartisan, and so are they. I faced a lot of opposition because what I call the multi-controlled political entities in this country are all pushing this agenda I'm going to be talking about tonight and all the rapid sheep, if you will, that follow them. They don't like people like me or the voices of Lori Minster because we're exposing all of them. And the premier in Alberta, I'm not gonna dwell on her much, but she's a phony fraud as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Yep. I was doing a lot of 5G during the lockdown. I saw the towers going up and I got concerned and I started doing videos and they were reaching a lot of people. You know what she did? Her and her corporate friends on her corporate radio show, she does a show on 5G and how harmless it is. And right now she's in bed with the telecommunication industry in Alberta. Rogers, tell us, on and on. Same with the other lackey that was in there. But they're, these are all just political puppets. And I talked to the voices of Lord Minster about it. But I don't, I don't know what the solution, but let's go through the material tonight. This is all factual information. I'm going to look at history so you understand the history of this. This, uh, I would argue it's uh, the biggest cover-up of our times. I would argue it's becoming a crisis of epic proportions, even though it's silent, it's odorless. The bottom line is radiation. Radiation is radiation. And there's countries in this world that are doing something about it. 
and I'll talk about that. Protecting young children who are highly vulnerable. Our loving pets, who we, who we love so much. And our pregnant women are highly vulnerable, those groups. It's criminal what's going on in North America and the Europe. But as, as this uh, lady here said, uh, we're in a crisis now on so many levels. Before I start, I want you to know there's so many layers to this, layers and layers. I had to be selective. I will provide uh, information links. So I, I promise you I will not spam you. I'd be happy to send them to the links. All this is documented and it's continuing to be documented. Let's start. I want to get some reality to start. Part of what I do, I have a master's degree in environment and development from the University of Cambridge in England. Um, I'm very proficient at research, but I believe in field work. The combination is quite powerful because you get the research, the analytical, you get all, uh, I can uh, pick the minds of um, highly competent researchers, intellects, and then you get the, the, the on the ground like we did here. We're going to show both tonight. There's four videos. This here is in Calgary, Alberta. Does anyone know what that is before we start? Yeah, it's a directed energy weapon system. Really? Uh, and you see that? Uh, does anyone know what MOG is? M O O G. That's a, a military uh, company in the U.S. They do uh, military-grade turrets on um, on military vehicles. They could have uh, uh, all kinds of. Uh, like machine guns and, and even even beyond that on there, and also laser weapons and microwave weapons. So this is a MOG turret that's on a Calgary City of Police uh, armor truck. They're now using it in Calgary. And this is a directed energy weapon system. Above there, they send out microwaves, miller, millimeter waves, ideally in crowds and groups of people. And there's a potential for a laser weapon. Um, and these are, these are extremely powerful. And I think they're like 150 times more powerful than, than a microwave oven. And, and the laser beams can be obviously lethal. If they're directed, they can cut through steel and, and whatever. So these are already being used in our public domain without the people knowing, just so you know. These are used on the battlefield by the U.S. military as well. And there's, I will send you a link which will, will, will show them in operation. Let's move to the next slide. This is an important study from, uh, it's dealing with early research on the biological effects of microwave radiation between 1940 and 1960. During that time they came up with radar, which was using microwaves. And uh, that's when this first started. And the importance of this article is they're dating back to then. This is when it all started about 75 years ago. But there was a, whoever's in power in North America or Europe, these globalists, whoever they are, they decided, not democratically, but they decided this only has thermal effects, heating effect. They denied the biological effects, the non, what's called non-thermal effects. Guess what? This is this has gone on to today. Health Canada denies biological effects, thermal effects. An international body on it denies it. FDA denies it. They all deny it. These puppet politicians deny it, like that that fake premier in Alberta. Okay? This is all lockstep control of the public. The bottom line is they're pushing this agenda against the betterment of the people. And I will show you concrete evidence to what I'm saying, but this is a very important article. And he talks about it, and his conclusion, what, you, know, you know what they did? It was all institutional manipulation of science. 
They funded the science to get a certain outcome. They smeared and ignored scientists who wanted to look at it neutrally and objectively and ask real questions. They ignored science. Even how Canada has ignored, I will show proof of that, they ignore real science pointing to biological effects. My reason, I, I think there's two reasons behind this, there may be more. One of them is it would cause huge liability for the telecommunication industry because there would be a lot of people with uh, short-term and potentially long-term serious implications from the radiation. Second, it interferes with their technocratic agenda. And they're all part of this, uh, the wokeism, the mass immigration, open borders, uh, these proxy wars, all these uh, cellular network, the lockdown, it's all leading to what's called a technocracy. And ultimately, I don't, I don't call them 15 minute cities, I call them 15 minute confinement zones, because that's really what they are. They are confining people to a zone. I'm gonna go into more detail of what our, of what our friend here was, was talking about. He just touched on it, but the details, if you go down to the details, they're quite scary. This is what's going on. There's an existential attack on the individual now. We saw that the Olympic Games opening. That's a, that's a, these are globalists behind that, and they want to attack the individual values, and they're also attacking the family unit here. And before I go further, I think because they're, they're anticipating that these humanoids, which are being developed now by Elon Musk and others, and AI robotics will replace a lot of humans. Starting next year. Hard. So you could argue there's a depopulation, a gradual de de depopulation agenda going on. This is the hard truth. Let's move on. This here is a, another important article, and um, I will provide a link to it. This guy did excellent work, Art Dula. It's called Microwave Radiation. It's hard to get a copy of this. It must be quite censored. 1978, it came out. He's a lawyer from the States, but he ended up document, documenting microwave sickness, i.e. biological effects, and uh, non-thermal effects from microwave radiation. That's the importance of this article, and uh, it was all connected to the radar. That's when this whole agenda started. This has been in the works for a long time. Let's move to the next slide. So he talks a bit about it here. Uh, there's a big impact on the uh, human central nervous system. Cell mem mem membranes are impacted. And uh, there's a uh, localized cell heating not detectable as gross thermal effect. So there's some kind, of, some kind of biological effect that's affecting cells that heating them, but it's not, not, it's not thermal. I'm just going to read through them. Uh, this is a big problem for young kids. Uh, it creates hot spots within the skull. So young kids have very thin skulls, so they're highly vulnerable. And um, there's issues with various sense organs, particularly aud auditory. And uh, there's disorders of the brain and nervous system. Uh, severe neuro neurotic syndrome is, is one of the issues. There's issues with the uh, thyroid gland enlargement, emotional instability, depression, uh, difficulties in concentration, memory, dizziness, loss of appetite, insomnia, sweating, increased fatigability, headaches. Very important document in 1978. However, Health Canada, as an example, to this day denied these effects. They deny them, everyone. This is the corruption, the sick corruption in this country. At the political level, these puppets and whoever's controlling them behind the scenes, they just do what they're told. Yep. Okay, let's move to the next slide. <clears throat> this will double down on it. This is um, Mr. Trower. He's important here in this context. He worked in radar in the British military, and he was sickened by what he saw. 
any devoted his life to researching this topic, please, please uh, listen to him. He's been completely vilified, by the way. Anything I say, I have documentary evidence for. I, I can't bring it all here. I've used 1,700 papers to compile with this um, and my last talk. But you're welcome to come and look at them and criticize them and say, can I have a copy of this and take it away from you if you want to take it away from But I don't say a single word unless I have documentary evidence. Now, my aim is not to upset anybody, but some of the things I say, you know, I can. Between 1949 and 1962, everything we needed to know about microwaves was known and published. By 1962, all of the dangers, all of the hazards, everything was known. And when I say all of them, the, between the superpowers and us, the brain at that time had been studied for brain waves and microwaves could be used to penetrate the brain and cause behavioural changes. And by 1962, with the uh, resonance frequencies of the organs and the brain, the cyclotronic resonance frequencies, circadian resonance frequencies, a statement was made in 1962 by the governments that birth defects, all birth defects, organs, whole organisms, all cells, brain function, all emotions, all moods could be altered, changed and destroyed by 1962. Microwaves then, as now, were used as stealth weapons before they became cell phones. And in 1965, they adopted an old 1953 thermal lever uh, by an engineer by the name of Schwann. And in order to prevent being taken to court, the industries and the people who make the decisions they adopted the Schwann 1953 level, which basically says if a certain weight of your tissue, either 10 grams or a kilogram, depending which way you were going, does not heat up by a certain temperature in six minutes, then everything will be deemed safe for a lifetime's exposure for adults, women, children, pregnant women. And the six minute thermal level is the one that is still used today. They totally ignored and put aside the electric and magnetic vectors of the wave and the harm that the electric and magnetic vectors can do. What's my stick? Right. Um, sorry. Sorry. Um, thank you very much, thanks. Uh, they put aside all of the harm from the electric and magnetic vectors. Oh, I'll knock it over again. Uh, now, they interfere with the electrical conductivity of the cells, the electrical conductivity of the neurons, the electrical conductivity of the brain, they interfere with the resonant frequency of the circadian resonant cells, the cyclotronic ions, in fact they interfere with everything. So all of those were brushed aside and we stuck with the six minute thermal limit. Some 
times they expend, extend it to 30 minutes. But basically it is a six minute, and that is what is enforced today in 42% of the planet of what we are not one. In that. Uh, cancer was proven to be uh, caused by <coughs> low level microwave radiation and has been kept secret ever since, along with all of the other illnesses and diseases. In the early 70s, this document was published. It was by the American military. By the American military, it is top secret, classified top secret. And it lists 2,000 research papers, 2,000, and each of those took many, many years to construct. 2,000 research papers, because in those days the military did the research with the universities. And it covers all of the illnesses which you can expect to get and die from, from continuous low-level radiation. This, I think, is the most shameful document ever to be published. It is by the World Health Organization. We pay them to protect us, and we trust them yeah. to protect us. In 1973, the World Health Organization had a conference in Warsaw, Biological Effects and Health Hazards of Microwave Radiation Below Thermal Radiation, which is what you have in your cell phones. 350 pages documenting harm to the ordinary person. 107 different chapters. Chapter 40 deals with cancer. Uh, I think 28 reproductive faults. But instead of telling the world, I don't know who made them make the decision, instead of telling the world, it was stamped top secret, with a big red top secret stamp, it still is, and you still will not be told about this, they will not admit to it, even today. The second most shameful document, I think, is this one. This was published between 1972 and 1976. The final part was 1976. It is from the US Defense Intelligence Agency. And the document says, if the more advanced nations of the West, us, are strict, in the enforcement of exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output, industrial output is profit, and military function. In other words, what they wanted us to do was set a level of radiation for the NATO countries, set a level of radiation that would not be strict. Hence, we came in with the six minute thermal level that is still in place today and what councils are advised to adhere to. I want to quote this one is because he has quoted that before this bubble bursts uh, with children and everybody running around with everything stuck to the size of their heads. It is expected and anticipated there will be two billion that's a city where it is unregulated. Just two provinces in India, they have 50,000 brain tumors in children and 100,000 plus dead in the provinces attributed to mobile phone masts. Uh, and so it goes on. And when you start, in 60 years, only one in eight of your children can be born, or expected to be born, 
healthy. How are you going to run your infrastructure? How are you going to run your health service? Who's going to pay for it? Where are the taxes coming from? Who's going to man the factories? Where are they coming from? The only answer to this is mass immigration. That is the only answer. If you wish to survive as a country. <clears throat> and in 2000, in the year 2000, studied the top 220 research articles and said that what they are putting out actually does cause cancer. The Council of Europe, 47 countries, 800 million people, so simple statement, ban Wi-Fi in schools. Dr. Annie Sasko, 22 years World Health, World Health Organization Cancer Department. <clears throat> Mobiles, cell phones and Wi-Fi will cause cancer. <clears throat> Where 5G is going up, all around the world. Where 5G is going up, trees are coming down. The reason is, trees inhibit the progress of 5G. 5G is not a big around circular wave that you get from transmitters. 5G is a beam, sort of a cross between a torch and a laser. It is a beam, and that beam has trouble going through a tree trunk or the density of leaves, especially if they're wet. And especially along roads. I have had calls from all over the world <coughs> um, saying, Barry, why are they cutting our trees down? And I say, is 5G going up? Yes, there is your answer. In Malta, the lady that rang me said they're cutting the trees down and the reason is that motorists can see better. In uh, the USA, when they're just not giving an explanation, they're just cutting them down. Sydney is the only place I know, Sydney, Australia, where they're telling the truth. And the application into the government is the submission to the government 5G inquiry. Sacrifice trees for network performance and overwhelming numbers of small cells. In Australia, they just said, if you want 5G, we cut the trees down, simple as that. Here, our local paper, or my local paper, Alter Bobby Tracy, um, the advertiser here, uh, we are culling. Now, the reason given to us uh, we are culling in the Teambridge area, that I come out of Teambridge, 90,000 trees for, or for, to stop the prevention of dieback. I don't know what dieback is, I'm not a tree expert, um, but we are cutting down 90,000 trees and we are also cutting down um, it is 440,000 trees along the road so that they do not pose a danger to motorists. Now, I wrote a letter to the newspaper along with a lot of other people. Mine is here. And I said, is it, is it a coincidence that we have to cut down 440,000 trees suddenly posing a danger at the exact location that 5G needs to be. Animals lose their immune system, all animals, and those that use the sun or the Earth's magnetic field, they become disorientated. Uh, migrating birds get lost, uh, butterflies get lost, <coughs> and you have uh, quite a lot of harm particularly on insects. Insects, uh, they have a large surface area to body volume. And 
their surface area absorbs more radiation than the body can hold. It's known that one of the 5G frequencies, when it was tested on a bee, just absolutely saturated the bee. The bee lost its immune system and the whole thing turned to pus inside. It was a comprehensive and legal study. <clears throat> this is a 15-year study, hundreds of papers, a 15-year study, Mount Nadi and Mount Matheson World Heritage Sites in Australia. World Heritage Site in Australia. <clears throat> the study was for, and this is a legal study, <clears throat> for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. <clears throat> and the conclusion over Mount Nardi, Mount Matheson, they only had 105 transmitters, which isn't that many, over 15 years, <clears throat> and I've never seen anything described like this before. They said, <clears throat> over the last 15 years, this affects not only the top of the life chain species, but they are devastating the fabric of the community of the world her heritage, <coughs> causing genetic deterioration in an insidious, massive, and ever escalating scale. To truly understand what these studies reveal is to stare into the abyss. And I've, I've never seen the word abyss in a scientific paper. <clears throat> and I thought, I'll just look it up in my Oxford dictionary um, to get the proper meaning because this is coming here with our nature. This is coming here. Um, and under my Oxford Dictionary, under abyss, it is an abyss of despair, a catastrophe, primal chaos, hell, and a bottomless chasm. Now, you can choose 5G than just putting up little boxes <coughs> on lampposts. 5G is the new generation. It is not a wave, it is a beam. It is going to be used by around 53 organizations in this country, plus the secret services, plus the military, plus the American bases and their frequencies. There are quite a lot of frequencies that people don't know about that are going up when you have a 5G transmitter. And most of them are secrets. <clears throat> In fact, there are a lot. And 5G is going to merge. When I look at the frequencies, the spectrum across the whole range, 5G is going to merge basically with Wi-Fi 6. And they are already producing 6G. 5G and Wi-Fi 6 are getting very, very close together. They are going to be uh, used in unison. In 1977, I have the paper, <coughs> an experiment was carried out on animals and humans using 5G. I won't go into the units, but the radiation level the unions, the humans and the animals were subjected to was at a level of 62. They were subjected to a level of 62 for 15 minutes a day for 60 days. In other words, 15 hours. That's it. <clears throat> you can legally, under the International Commission and our government, under the thermal regulations, <clears throat> you and all of the animals and all the trees, if 62, and I'm going to list the illnesses caused, 
from 11 of 62, you can legally be given for 24 hours a day, non-stop, forever, a level of 140, more than twice. The professors listed <coughs> damage to the skin, liver, heart, brain, adrenal glands, blood. The fetus, children, stem cells, human sperm, honeybee. <coughs> and that was just from one expect to one paper. There's the paper, it, it's a top. Yeah, well now you know why they're burning the forest everywhere yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Clearing up for 5G, guys. <coughs> Pretty tough, isn't it? But that's reality. I'm going to build off of anything else. The 5G, I just, uh, I just want to add one tidbit. Uh, that microwave radiation article they do, he does talk about, that was 1970, he was talking about how they're capturing solar in the atmosphere and they're beaming it down via micro, microwave radiation extremely high. And he, he voiced concern in that, in that paper, just so you know, these are massive solar stations in the atmosphere. And, and there was concern about the impact um, on life on, on the ground. This is on, uh, the 5G is referring to is referred to the millimeter wave. It's a lot smaller than the microwave. So the antennas are smaller because the wavelengths are coming out smaller. Just so you know, it's inverse. Normally we think something stronger has to be bigger, but this is the reverse. The range in the standards in Canada and North America are probably the worst in the world. They deny the biological effects, which Mr. Trower touched on. And in Canada, it's called Safety Code 6, and through the the Federal Communication Commission, they have regulations down there, but in both of them, they go, this is the range of them, they go from, this is the map of the range, but those standards go up to 300 gigahertz. I'm going to show you a video tonight in this town. I'm talking about two, three gigahertz. So where we're headed is potentially more than 200 times higher. What he was referring to was only about one gigahertz, two gigahertz, or less, the studies. And this is the range of the, the frequencies are between 30 gigahertz, and they can go up to 300 gigahertz. It's in the standard, it's allowed. And the, rate of the size of the wavelengths are 1 to 10 millimeters when they're coming out of the 5G millimeter wave. And here it's typically between 24 gigahertz and 100 gigahertz. That's at least, that's around 50 times more than what we're going to show you. Just keep that in mind. This is an important article, the Soviet Union took a completely different approach to North America with this. They acknowledged the, the, the biological effects. They did tons of research on the non-thermal effects. They have the strictest standards in the world. This is an article from 1977 on the biological effect of the microwaves. It talks about blood disorder, organ disorder, nervous system attacks, potential cancer, psychological issues, severe, on and on. Go ahead, next one. This is more of the article. They talk about kidney issues, on the mitochondria of organs, um, oxygen consumption issue. This is Definitely related to 5G now, oxidative stress at a certain level. 
60 gigahertz. Apparently, there it, it, it affects uh, the body, the, the blood, to be able to to, to uh, get the oxygen into the blood. It's called oxidative stress. I felt it around these towers, oxidative stress. Today, I was getting shortness of breath at this tower in Lord Minster. That's oxidative stress. Okay? We're already getting it. Next one. And this is all the, they determine nuclei, changes to the liver, spleen, kidneys, lungs, heart, on and on. Immune biological reactivity to the blood system, on and on. It's all there. <coughs> this is affecting us internally on a very, uh, very serious level. The organs, the blood, right? This is the millimeter. This is 5G beam, beam forming technology that we're going to have in these 15 minute confinement zones. Okay? They already have these antennas going up in Calgary, <coughs> in the downtown core, they have the small ones. Plus the big mass towers as well. I've already documented that. This was supposed to be a video, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it going to play? Yeah. This is right here. This is the worst tower I've seen so far. I just want to give you guys a taste. We're at Red Deer today. Uh, we're going to be going up to Edmonton. And there's some interest in Airdrie. Uh, we've had people in Airdrie uh, reach out to us now. Now we know why. Uh, there's some nasty stuff there. Uh, we're just going to do a, a quick stop in the Red Deer here. Uh, I'm going to give you the lay of the land. So we're in a, a commercial area here. Uh, there's number two over there, uh, the main highway. Uh, we've got some uh, electrical towers. Our meter doesn't pick up this electrical um, radiation. Uh, it's only picking up the cellular. But look at this, eh? Uh, Jesse, uh, Jesse, our uh, activist in uh, Vancouver, did a did something similar to what we're going to show you today, but. Well, this is basically full of box stores. Looks like you got a hotel over there. This is only one example. I'm gonna get the meter going. So this is picking up on uh, EMF radiation. It's an audio of what the radiation in the area and it's pretty high to say the least so what drew us to this tower today which is right there is how low it is to the ground so it's basically radiating people as they uh, do their shopping here as you can see it's, a, it's only about 30 feet 35 feet from the ground Pretty obscene. We don't see 5G on this one. Uh, it's a Rogers Telus tower. We checked it. It's going up to 2.6 gigahertz. But our meter doesn't lie. It's just stuck at six. Literally. Oh my God. Holy jeez, the radiation coming out of that is crazy. It's stuck at six volts per meter. I've got the phone two feet away from it. The back side, there's no impact on this phone on the meter whatsoever. We're going over 51,000, 60,000. Microwatts per square meter. These, 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 are, these are the highest readings we've recorded from a tower so far. The meter is literally just stuck at six. The safe level is 0.5 volts per meter. The safe level in a public area is 1,000. And we've gone up to 60, 
microwatts per square, 67,000. 67,000 now microwatts per square meter. This is obscene. Uh, this is how bad things are. Uh, I'm just blown away by the readings. And we're not even dealing with 5G yet. Look at that. This area is a serious health hazard. This is uh, part of the crime in Canada regarding this issue. Look at that. Unbelievable. Look at that. Look, this is unbelievable. And this is just a single tower here. There's areas of Red Deer where they have like eight towers in close proximity. We're only dealing with one here. Look at that. Oh my God, 82,000 microwatts per square meter. 82,000 it went up to. Unbelievable what they're getting away with. It shows what's happening in Canada. It shows what's happening here. The people are coming last. These corporations, the big telecommunication oligarchy is running things in Canada. These puppets in Ottawa, it doesn't matter what, what establishment party it is. They're all in on it. The whole thing is an absolute joke. But look at this. This is the reality of it. Unbelievable, the meter. <coughs> Unbelievable. The readings. Look at this. Just wait till we get to Edmonton. There's uh, there's sites there with six cellar towers within close proximity of each other. Look at these. No one here knows what's going on. Stuck at six. It's over six. This place is a hell hazard. I gotta get the hell out of here. Please share this, everyone. <coughs> That was real, folks. I had to leave, just like I had to leave the site. I'll show you the video from Lloyd Minster. It's on that level. Keep in mind what Mr. Drower said about all the facts. That's six volts per meter, that's measuring frequency. The standards we follow by the BioNish and Building Biology, they're recommending lower than 0.5 volts per meter. We were well above six volts per meter frequency. In terms of the, the other side, the microwatts per square meter, that's the power output. They work hand in hand frequency and power output. The power output projects the frequency farther, right? That's why they're both important. The recommended standard in the public area is 1,000, as it said in the video. We were, I believe we went up to 97,000 there. And we're only dealing with microwaves here, folks. Keep that in mind. Let's keep moving. This is on the exposure limits. I wanted to share this with you.
and it's showing the guidelines and uh, Canada and the U.S. are the worst in the world. They're in complete denial of the biological facts. Look at the difference. Canada, they're, they're allowing 1,000 microwatt centimeters square. If we go down to China, Russia, they're only allowing 10 microwatts meters. I'm going to explain why some of this is happening. <coughs> and even further, Belgium, Bulgaria, 2.4. Eastern European countries have a good understanding of this. I don't know why. And Russia as well. In Australia, Austria is very low. Let's move to the next. So the basic standards in North America, they equate to, in this video, we we're around six, you know, I, who knows where we were. We might have been 10, 12 volts per meter in that. I had to leave at that point. I was feeling pressure and oxidative stress yeah. and all that stuff, right? They allow, the current standards, I, I worked it out, they allow up to almost 78 volts per meter. 78. And I think I was around six, do the math, that's more than 10 times. Pardon me? Yes, we did, can you wait, please? We're gonna allow questions. But that's what they're allowing now. Um, I just want to put this in context, and the, the range is 3 kilohertz up to 300 gigahertz. That tower in Red Deer, I was at 2.7 gigahertz. Look where we're going. We're in the early stages of this, folks. Let's go next. These are our equating biological effects to the meter. I'm not going to go through them all, but at one point, Where is it there? At 1.25 microwatts centimeters square, RF exposure affected kidney development of rats. These are all the stuff they're talking about, a nervous system activity, DA damage in cells at six microwatts centimeters square. This is Phillips 1998. These are all scientific reports. Affecting the immune system. This is similar to what Mr. Trower was talking about. Calcium con concentrations in the heart muscle. Well, 1996. These are scientific reports. This moves to the next one. This is on 5G exposure. And changes in the immune system. Uh, affect genes related to cancer. Pathological leakage in the brain barrier at nine, 915 um, megahertz, so that would be 0.915 gigahertz. Effect immune function of white blood cells. Increased free radical production in, in, in rat cells. Free radicals are extremely dangerous. You get the idea here, I'm not going to go into it all. Let's go next. This here is a self-appointed international body connected to the World Health Organization. It's called the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. They're connected to the telecommunication industry worldwide and they set standards. They deny the biological facts, not surprisingly, and only look at their raw facts. I did read one article showing ties to them receiving money from the telecommunication industry. Right? No one's surprised there. This, this comes home to Canada. The, one of the engineers who was in this went to McGill. It's close to home here, right? So everyone has a price. There was a group, Canadians for Safe Technology, they submitted a report to the Health Minister, Ron Ambrose, and all the uh, scientific reports were ignored. And they exposed the EMF gross limitations of safety code 6, which are quite obvious. And then in 2016, the, the government asked 
This is here on uh, the reports that were ignored by, ignored by Ambrose, the health minister. There was 20, 25 reports on cancer, genetic damage, male and female infertility, which is big. Too many, too many people give the World, uh, the, the, um, the World Economic Forum too much credit. It's just an indoctrination arm and, and uh, edu educational arm of, uh, of these globalists, let's face it. They're just one cog in the system. But this is where we're headed. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is all related. Uh, the bigger one is the Fourth Industrial Revolution, Great Reset. You know, that global governance, internet governance, blockchain, which is digital currency. Trump's pushing cryptocurrency, but is that because it's going to lead to um, digitalization and, and cashless society? Um, I felt this, I know Edmonton's doing it. There's plans here to do it. I know in Calgary, they, like during the lockdown, they set up the bike zones while everyone was locked down, right? So, part of the car. Here, um, they're going to have tiered parking lace, parking race. So if you're driving an individual, and this is about eliminating your vehicle, they're talking about that. They want to increase diversity in housing, establish big housing, tiered parking, right, all this stuff. Expand and improve local transport. That's a Wi-Fi modem. Distance is your friend, but there's limits, right? This whole office is saturated. See that, folks? And it's starting to drop a bit as we get further away, but the whole office is... Look at that. And there's, there's so many people that live, like, live right beside or work beside these things. Look, right there, right there. There it is behind there. Right? Right there. So it is what it is, folks. I just saw, you know, we've done these before. It seems like it's repetitive now. Whenever I do a home visit, this is the main source in the home, these Wi Fi modems and just people don't realize how powerful they are, but you know. Ask us any questions, but I, I personally screen mine with these uh, metal mesh garbage office garbage collectors. I have actually two right over top, and it's not an issue. I can enjoy the Wi-Fi without um, getting uh, extreme exposure. So it is what it is. You got to protect your health. This is what this is about. Hopefully, this is helpful. Ask any questions. But 
I'm in Saskatchewan today. Uh, we're going to be uh, visiting some towers tomorrow. There's some scary ones here, but uh, we're doing home visits today. But what meter do you recommend? I recommend uh, for temporarily the Kusa meter. Uh, it goes up to 8 gigahertz, but eventually um, um, you're going to have to get one more powerful than that as, as this stuff rolls out and gets more deployed. But that's good for now. When they get the 5G millimeter wave, you know, you're going to need one that can potentially go up to 70 gigahertz, even 90, 95, 100 gigahertz. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it now. But uh, the acoustic meter is fairly expensive, but it's a, it's a reliable meter right there. But take this stuff seriously. I did read a, uh, there was an article in 1978 on microwave radiation and it documents all the non-thermal biological effects. So we're going to post that to let people know. But it's strange, and it's strange in the West, there's a complete denial by the establishment of thermal effects, biological effects. In contrast, if you go to uh, Asia, uh, places like Russia, they totally acknowledge thermal effects, biological effects. They actually have restrictions. You can't have Wi-Fi cell phones in children's schools and all that. They take it seriously. So it is what it is, folks. So please take this stuff seriously. Uh, it will impact your health. Uh, less seriously in the short term, but more seriously in the long term. So it's about quality of life. So we'll post more. Thank you. Yeah, I should add there, uh, these modems, when they have fiber optics running into them, they're even more powerful. Because the fiber optics does not does not lose anything as it's being transmitted through the fiber optic cable. And it's coming up. I went to one else, it was extremely, even more powerful than this. But I would never work beside this. I can't, like, you're getting blasted. It's like a little cell tower in your uh, in your thing, and um, how but, large was that service in that house? Pardon me. What was the service in that house? How many megabytes? I'd have to ask the owner. I'm not going to say, but typical. I'm, I'm assuming it's 2.4 gigahertz coming in on the, the modem. I would have to ask them. But well, that's pretty consistent. I've done a lot of modems, and that's pretty consistent with them. So here's the cell tower. We're going to look at it. You guys draw your own conclusions. Oh, actually, so these, this is another site we were at. Another site. I took a photo of the, the meter. So we're across the street. Max has six. I think we were up to about 5,000. Where's that? This is at, uh, this is in Lloyd Minster, just... At, at the, the hospital. hospital. At the hospital, yeah. so um, let's move to the next slide. This is horrible. This, uh, where, where is this? Uh, there's two towers there. Fortunately, there's no kids in this photo, but uh, you can't see them. I didn't do a video because of the young kids. I don't want them videoed. And uh, so this was maxed out quite far from those towers. At, there's a playground. Is it? Would it be on the the west, the north, northeast, uh, northeast side? That might be southwest, yeah, southwest of the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. It was like a hill over there. It's quite far from the towers. Those towers are quite high. So when they beam out, they're going quite far. Whereas that stubby one in red deer, it's quite low to the ground, so it's hitting more direct along the ground. These ones are further out. You can see this is way too high for young kids. We're at, we're max at six volts per meter here, folks. Come on. The standards, remember the standards, they allow up to 78 here. And there's... Uh, that's another playground with the towers. Oh, why not? You see? But they're quite high. When you, when you see a high tower, you know 
is projecting far, right? The ones I worry about mostly are the short, stubby ones because they're very direct. Eh? That's my experience. And yeah, that's Bud Miller. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the tower here. Let's take a look, folks. frequency being measured is well above the safe limit of 0.5 volts per meter. I can feel it here, folks. I feel like a pressure, uh, shortness of breath. 39,000. Very 
very strong stuff here. These stones are the worst, the, the stubby ones. Yeah, we've got a size 43 now. That's the power output. It work, works hand in hand with the frequency. Gives it more projection, the frequency. So the microwave we did yesterday was on par with this 50, 58,000. It didn't go as high as that, the microwave oven. But in that kitchen yesterday, it was maxed out at 6 volts per meter and went as high as 34,000. That microwave oven, so I don't... 54,000, 55,000, 58, 66,000 power up, but it's very powerful. 69,000. Eighty-three thousand folks. This is almost uh, the highest we've seen. Unbelievable. Oh God, this is bad. Now, I, now you know why I've been doing a lot of videos like this. I just don't like being around it, but. It's important people understand that this seller grade is all about the artificial intelligence, the self-driving vehicles, uh, they're creating a network of continuous connection. It has nothing to do with the well-being of the people, but it is what it is, folks. This is all over the US, EU, obviously Canada, you name it, and uh, we'll, we'll just have to keep, keep exposing it 
Who needs to be a wave, wave runners? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say, folks. The, the meter's not lying. You draw your own conclusions. It is what it is. I don't know. I, I gotta go now, but uh, I hope this is helpful. Yeah, it was quite severe, folks. Where was that at? Um, where's Kurt? Um, right behind Honda. Right, right behind Honda. Honda. Yeah, so I was in the house. There's another video up. I, we can't show it all. It was a microwave oven about four years old. We had it on, um, and the meter was at six volts for being here. Six volts, max. And it was up as high as 34 miles in, in the kitchen. I don't use a microwave. And that article um, in 1978 up there, they mentioned microwaves, how they the ceiling, the, the protective ceiling deteriorates over time and then it just starts leaching out. So, I don't want to scare anyone, but this is what's going on. I hope I can't touch on anything. I just want to talk about one thing. I did mention Russia. I find it interesting to compare with the Soviet Union, uh, obviously probably uh, the most powerful nuclear nation in the world, and they understand radiation, and they, they have uh, their fair share of excellent scientists, right? And we showed you the millimeter wave. We're in, I don't know what's going on here in the West with this wokeism and, and garbage. I think it's all about depopulation, in my opinion. But Russia is all about children and the family, yeah. and they're putting money, instead of bringing mass immigration in here, because we have a demographic issue, we have low fertility, probably connected to the South Towers, because it's been linked, in for infertility and psychological issues, and they're, they're, um, they're distorting people's values, right? Yeah, they don't value traditional values, right? So in Russia, they do, I'm not, Putting them on a pestle, I have to call the spade a spade. And they have a democratic issue there. I think they have a 1.41 in um, a birth, birth to death rate, and it has to get a lot higher for them. It has to be over two to maintain their population. So they're putting money into the family, right? Larger family, um, having large family, the woman is a hero, right? Children are precious. That's the review over there. But the reason I'm mentioning is when it comes to EMF radiation, they, the last three years, they banned all the stuff in schools, cell towers in schools, Wi-Fi in schools, because they know, they know. I, these uh, scientists over there know the impact. They've been researching it for decades, their own, not their own facts, they know. Their standards, you know what their standards are over there? Max in a public area, six volts per meter. We're 76. The message here is the people, the globalists, whoever these people are, not these politicians, because they're puppets. Whoever's controlling them don't give a shit about the people. And that's what they're telling you. I don't know what to do, but you gotta protect yourselves from this. It will harm you. It will affect your quality of life in terms of headaches and whatever and that that type of thing. So you gotta you gotta avoid exposure. Right? It's getting harder and harder as they deploy more. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't feel it's a big issue in my life. I have it contained right now, except when I do these towers. So I've been feeling the last couple of days, trust me, I'm not making it up. But this is real. France is another country. They're into this globalist gender. We all know about Macron and the, and these French Olympics. That just said it all. They're what they're about. These these people are sick. But they 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 actually did the same thing to protect the children in, in schools too. Believe it or not. And they ended up banning one of the Apple phones because it was putting out too much radiation. So I don't know. They have kind of a contradiction there. You would think they would. They wouldn't give a damn about the people, right? But I just you trust them. So they are trying to protect them in school. We do nothing, folks, to protect them. We hide it from people. There's a disclaimer when you buy a, a cell phone. 
use a headset or a speakerphone. No one reads it, right? Yeah. So, but you gotta avoid it, and it may be shield. Like, Wi-Fi is an amazing technology. I'm not against technology, but it has to be about public health, right? And you're, if you lose your health, you have nothing, right? Let's face it, right, folks? So that has to come first for me, like I'm sure everyone here. So I shield the Wi-Fi, um, and we have some containers. Yeah, yeah, this is what I use. I use two of them over the Wi-Fi, and I can I can utilize Wi-Fi, which is amazing technology, how it can transmit right wirelessly. But I bought mine online. Uh, this is the type of mesh you just put it over top. Right? It's stainless steel mesh, and I was able to record a 75% reduction in the emission from the Wi-Fi modem. I use two on it, I'm getting about an 80% reduction. And I can, I can live. Do you ground it to ground once you put it over there? Do I, do I ground it? Yeah, apparently you ground it. No, it's just on a wood floor. I didn't need to ground it. This right. is shielding it, it's acting as a shield. Do that. Pardon me, the metal, the metal acts as a shield. There are holes in that thing. It doesn't matter, you want holes because you don't want a fire in your house. You don't want the modem to overheat unnecessarily. So it's small enough that it shields it. No, no, tinfoil doesn't, doesn't work. We tested it today as a, as a last resort, but like I said, I had this one guy who worked in the telecommunication rigor, and he was denying it all. And anyone here who wants to deny it, well, I got a challenge for you, and and you can prove us wrong. But I want you to, and I really don't want you to do this, because I because I think you will harm yourself. But I want you to take one of those modems when it's going and put it beside your head for 30 minutes. I asked that telecommunication workers, he was adamant. There's no harm from it. Did he do it? No. Put that beside your head for 30 minutes, I'll video it. I don't want to see you do it because I know you're going you're gonna to hurt yourself, you're going to have some kind of impact. Right? But he didn't do it. So, and these stupid politicians, same thing. But they're just puppets, you know, they're just, they're controlled by the telecommunication and, and other bodies, right? We see it the street. But this is real, folks, and we're just at the beginning of it. I don't want to scare anyone. <coughs> but just be aware and try to protect yourself. Yes, sir? So what I don't understand is these people must be awfully stupid themselves because they're living among us. They're going to be affected too, and their families. So forth, so forth, so forth. Yeah, some of them are in denial. The politicians forget about them. Yeah. Like, by a higher ops, who, they probably live on estates. Who knows what they're doing? And uh, Elon Musk let the, let the can out of the bag. I don't want to go on here. I will take questions now. Elon Musk, he's his Neuralink company, and it's, it's been projected to help all disabled people, right? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said the ultimate goal is to get brain chips in everyone's head, and it's going to replace the cell phone. As soon as they got a brain chip in your brain, they're tracking your thoughts. Think about it. People are done. So this is a made up, folks. This is happening, um, and they're and they're working on all this stuff now. And uh, we all know about the lap food and the crickets and all that's coming, right? And that was legalized in the U.S., by the way, lab food. Yeah, not in Florida. The 5G, I, I've done research. I think the magic number might be 2027. It's going to take time. They're going to be in urban, dense and urban environments. The 5G is short beams of energy. Imagine the cataracts, eh? If that beam is coming, like, and uh, it's not for you or your cell phone, even if you have one at a time, folks. Car, it's for all the robotics and AI and self-driving. That's what it's going to propel. Remember that. Network. Yes, all the technology. That's what it's powering. 
has nothing to do with the people. I just heard that Ron DeSantis in Florida has banned all yes. the Yeah, it's the Bay of it. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, that's only one tip of it, right? Yeah. Right? There's a lot more. He needs to go further than that. And he can ban it, but how's he going to know? Because I talked to someone earlier and how it's kind of mixed in. And it's not label crickets, it's something else. Yeah. Right? So, and what's he going to do when they eliminate cattle ranching? Coming their way, yeah. Right? Well, you know, see what I'm saying, where, where this is all going, right? Eh? So I don't want to scare people, but this is the reality. I've been attacked by the government. Uh, they've come after me, just so you know. Uh, they don't want anyone. This is the linchpin. I, I was talking to uh, Carl about it. This is the linchpin of what they're doing, these cellular networks, because it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... It's going to drive the digitalization. Everything they, everything they're doing, all these technologies, and it's been in the works. Think about it. They've been planning this incrementally, and it's all interconnected. This is a main up. Yeah. What do you think they? Uh, uh, the bad left thing. Yeah. Because so yes, ma'am. We can buy the Yeah, I read, um, I read um, <laughs> epidemiology studies out of Germany and Israel, and they say if you live within 400 meters of those towers, they were estimating you have a 2.7% chance increase of cancer. That's quite high. Basically, my message is you shouldn't, you don't want to be within at least 500 meters of those towers. Your house is going to provide protection, but you want to avoid exposure around the tower. Like like me today, I was getting exposed. You don't want to be, like if you're in the backyard, you don't want to be sitting for an hour with that tower blasting you, right? You'll, you'll be like one of those lab experiments like Mr. Trower was talking about, right? So you got to limit the exposure. I think where people need to start is start in your house, the Wi-Fi modem, a lot of people don't know. I go into almost every house, and sure enough, it's the Wi-Fi modem. That's the main source. So they got to shield that, and we provide you with a simple, cost-effective solution. Right? You got to. You want a safe zone in your house. You got to watch out for these smart devices. I looked at a smart barbecue. It's a mini, uh, up to six volts per meter signals every 30 seconds. Right? All these devices, so you got to be careful. I find the Wi-Fi modem is the biggest culprit in the house. Turn your cell phone. I, I, I put my airplane, uh, cell phone on airplane mode at night. If you turn it off, it's still on, by the way. It's still emitting. So, 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 that, so that doesn't work. Airplane mode is the most effective. I shut off my Wi-Fi modem at night as well. And it's double contained. I still have enough Wi-Fi, it's amazing technology, I can use it and enjoy it in other parts of the house, right? Is that just a trash can? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, they're not trash cans, they're actually stainless steel mesh. Stainless steel is an important metal that can uh, shield this stuff. What about people that have working on a computer all day long? What would you do to protect Yeah, computers aren't that bad. The problem is the, is the Wi-Fi modem that's nearby, if it is. Watch out for printers, too. They have a Wi-Fi modem on there. They're quite powerful, right? The, yeah, the brand new cars I've been in the TELUS, they have a computer module there. It's basically like a Wi-Fi modem blasting at those people, right? So, and I haven't even talked about the cellular uh, satellite technology that's happening, right? Which is only going to increase, but that's mainly in rural areas. Those little, some companies sell those little discs. You can put them on the back of your phone. In front of your I don't think they do anything. 
I don't think they do anything. I tested all that, Shungite and all that. I didn't see any shielding properties. That's just my opinion. You got some. So they, and those acoustic meters, where do you buy them? I bought it online. Okay. It's quite expensive. It's about 600 bucks. But it's a professional meter. You can go for more. It's limited in the sense that it, it can't isolate the source of EMF. So there are limitations to it. But generally, you know the source when you're, like I'm in front of the tower. I know that's the source, right? Yeah, just be careful. They do put out radiation. So let the gang just get in your exposure. Master the mic. Yes, sir. Oh, definitely. What was the question? Everybody wants to know what the question was that she Oh, that was just about phone boosters. She lives in a rural. So she could use a trash can on that. It will limit the signal, though. You're just... I, I adjust my signal accordingly, but I find... Um, it's working fine now for me. So. I'm curious, have you used your meter in this room with all these people? You have a tablet there, you have all of us with cell phones? There's a Wi Fi uh, right up here, I saw it when I started. Okay. So, what do you think your meter is going to say? I wish I brought it with me. That was an oversight on my part. Uh, I'm going to smoke it on my crap. Um, the meter, I don't think it's that bad. Uh, there's some um, routers right there. Uh, I'm not going to guess. I'm not in, into the business of guessing. So I can't say I'm here. I haven't left. So that tower, I had to leave. You saw me, right? So when I was in that office, I had to leave. It is probably elevated a bit here. No, I mean the radiation is probably elevated. I, I, I'm not going to guess. It could be in the mid extremes. It may be two or three volts per meter. I would think it would be great. Um, not necessarily. And a lot of us have 5G here. Uh, do you have 5G? Is it 5G or is it just marketing? I don't believe there's 5G out there. I didn't see any 5G in Lloyd Minster. Uh, Lloyd, uh, yeah, Lloyd Minster. It's just a marketing gimmick to sell sell stuff right now. But they will bring it. They are putting up those small antennas all over. Yeah, it's a concern. Young kids are highly vulnerable. They should be using hardwire and, and uh, the Xbox. We we measured Xbox is putting out a strong signal, right? All the stuff, everything. I think everyone needs to know when they talk about smart, they're talking about wireless Wi-Fi. Okay? That's what you need to understand when they say that. What do you mean? Oh yeah, that's just, um, I think the reason they did that, they can add more, they can add more antennas, whereas the ones that are tight, there's a limit to how many antennas they can put up there. And if, if you see some of the towers, they have like booms coming down for more antennas. So you see there's, there's, there's more coming. I don't know, there's something in these cell phones. I don't understand it, but I measured it, that they're still putting out a signal. Airplane mode, for the most part, stops it. And I, what I do is I shut off the Wi-Fi, and I strictly have airplane mode on. That's all I do, and I find it safe. And I can, I'm comfortable sleeping beside my phone, well, not beside it, but like on the dresser or whatever.
Yeah, well, the problem with the, the fiber optic is extremely powerful. It, when it's transmitted, it's not losing any energy, right? But the problem is when it hits the modem, it'll be strictly hardwired when it comes in. Is that, is that what you're going to do? That's a potential there. There's only one issue with that um, fiber optics. It can contaminate electrical wires. There is a secondary effect from it, but if you go hardwire with it, you'll be pretty much safe from the... We have an article on that that talks about it. Yeah, they can't force you to take it, but they're they're really aggressive in in, in Calgary, especially in apartments. Eh? Well, they're pushing it on everyone in, in big apartments now, right? and they're sending out flyers and you know because they invested a lot of money into this. But remember, this uh, fiber optics is just part of the whole network for these confinement zones. Eh? Yes, sir. Basically, I know you talked about not trusting political parties. But I'm the Northwest Regional Director for the Buffalo Party. Okay. And I was just in contact with Bill, telling him what's happening here. We're going to need your information because Bill said if the Buffalo Party gets in, those towers are coming down. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, you know who you'll be facing. Well, he knows that. The most severe opposition imaginable because those towers are integral to everything these globalists have been working on for decades. What they well, that's, that's another thing. They've been working on this, and that's almost trying to get rid of the Federal Reserve, you will get killed. <laughs> I'm just, I, I, I'm not being negative, but I want you to know how serious, they've, they've gone after me quite severely, okay? They've come, they tried to put criminal charges on me, they tried to throw me in jail, they, they, they smeared me, they called me every name in the book, okay? Yeah. Right? He was aware of that. I've, I've, I've received veiled threats over the phone, okay? Saying, why are you doing this? You, you know, they could easily kill you, type thing. Okay, so this is serious stuff. This is part of their agenda, and we don't know what's going on, folks, but there's people, it's not democratic, it has nothing to do with democracy. These are, whether, you know, these globalists who are making decisions, not democratically, behind the scenes, and then they just get these puppets to implement it, right? So, we saw it with the lockdown, right? Did you say there was no 5G yet in Lloyd Minster? I didn't hear you. I didn't see any 5G in um, yeah. Lloyd Minster. It's millimeter wave, it's small antennas, it's, it's beam forming technology, not these large microwaves. They, they, they're also saying that the 5G has gonna affect people that have that COVID vaccine. Is well, that, there's any yeah. truth to that or not? I don't know. Uh, we did an article, there's a potential with graphene oxide uh, yeah. being being impacted by it. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I you know there's a lot of, all this nanotechnology, with it, which I didn't talk about, and the transmitters, neural transmitters, and all that. This is real stuff, right? So, ultimately, uh, I did read a report on. This is a NATO report on cognitive warfare, and they were talking about the brain is the battlefield of the 21st century, controlling the human brain. Folks, and then we get into the brain chips, right? So this is a made up stuff. You're not gonna hear this on the mainstream news, right? I haven't even talked about geoengineering, which is that's another reason. A lot of a lot of people deny it, but cloud seeding is factual. The UN has talked about doing it to stop the rates, right? To stop the whole presentation of It's not made up. So don't look me up on Wikipedia. It's run by the CIA, as far as I'm concerned, and that's a way to to uh, control the narrative. And I haven't even talked about the Ukraine proxy war, which is one of the most sickening things to ever occur. But 
Um, just not really a question, but um, to what you had said about the vaccines affecting um, or the towers affecting people who are vaccinated. I think a lot of us have the graphene oxide because it's being sprayed on us. So it's in our food, it's in our water. Um, and I did watch a doctor who was addressing a panel of government officials and she was saying how um, these towers affect your sugar glucose, your heart, your ability to breathe. It reduces the oxygen supply in the air. Um, so when they talk about global warming and all of that kind of stuff, these towers are reducing our oxygen supply. Yeah. So it's gonna affect all plant life, animal, and um, and us as human beings. Like I've watched um, people who like today, shortness of breath. For me, it was instant pain in my head is what I got from that tower over by those dealerships. Just so everybody knows, it, it was very painful for me. And that's something that I experience on a regular basis here. And I notice a difference when I leave the city. I don't have burning in my muscles. Um, my joints ache less. My headaches are lessened. Um, so just something to be aware of. If, if you can avoid them as much as possible. Um, it's, it's really unfortunate that we have two big ones at Bud Miller Park. Lots of people like to go there and hang out at the park, <laughs> the water park, um, all of that. And I really hope that one day soon they'll all be taken down. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a tough battle, folks. And by the way, we're being sprayed with, with metals all day long, aluminium, barium, lithium. So imagine what metal does when you put it in the microwave. Yeah, so we could go on all night, yeah, folks. I hope you get an idea. I, I've only touched on things. There's so much more I could share. There's so many layers, right? I hope this helps. But I hope, you know, one thing you take away from this, that this isn't made up stuff, right? Go to that tower where I was and stand there for 10 minutes. That's my challenge to anyone who's denying You don't even need 10 minutes. Just go there and stand there or stick to it. I don't want anyone to do this, but you could stick a Wi-Fi modem to your head. And you tell me that it's just thermal. Right? But there's a lot of technology, smartwatches, everything. Everything is becoming wireless, right? It's amazing technology. The sad thing about our societies here, we're not honest. What's being done? Because we could be using this technology safely if we were honest about the true effects. But they're more concerned about protecting the telecommunication industry and their agenda. Because that would put a huge dent into what they're doing. That's the reality of it. People are coming last. People are collateral damage, and we're seeing that in the Ukraine proxy war on a horrific, horrific level right now, as another example. I, I just can't believe that that this country would be contributing to that. It's a Kustameter AM10. It's okay, it's limited, because eventually these, um, Frequencies, you know, could go 24 to 100 gigahertz higher. They could ultimately go up to 300 gigahertz. This meter only goes up to eight. I bought it online, Amazon. There's a lot of stuff there. That they're, they're obviously part of it, but you got to do what you can do, right? Uh, it's like I, today when I was doing that video, I was using the cell tower to transmit live. So. Why not? Why shouldn't I use it? I don't care. But I hope that helps everyone. I don't want to, please take this seriously. That's what I want people to take away from this. Take this seriously, it is real. 
there are, there are short-term effects that we talked about and very serious intermediate long-term effects. Young children, pregnant women, our loving pets that we love so much are highly vulnerable. So we got to be very careful with them. And uh, I'm always careful with my dog, making sure he's not getting exposed, right? Or a young kid, even two-year-old, two -year -old. protect them.
That's what he used to do. He used to pay attention. He used to gather together. He used to sit at the table. He used to put the top priority problem that he had on, and they all worked together and found plans and solutions. We, there's only one way we get out of this, is working together and exercise our powers as creators. Because we're all creating, we all are creators. And remember, we're all looking for an easy solution by voting by people that are gonna solve our problem. But all these leaders that are out there, they all supply for the system. We are the power and we must sit together and talk about things. And this is how we figure out solution and start working. And as you will create some action with positive results, you will be leading by example and you will be getting other people getting involved. So somebody's got to get it started. Well, we have to sit together and make plans and strategies and you are all able to do this. Yeah, and I would say voices of the Lord Minister is a good place to start. Come on, they're the ones that put on this event, like, and it shows they're integral, right? I've been attacked. Fake conservatives, liberals, you name it, they all hate me because they're all doing this. Let's face it. During the lockdown, those freedom people hated me. You know why? Because their political offshoots are all supporting it. Why would they want to acknowledge what we're talking about, right? They're all getting exposed by this. I can't believe I'm saying this in the West. I thought this was about liberty and freedom and all these, are they fictitious, these values? Democracy, when there's people behind the scenes making long-term plans without actually anyone knowing? That's what's going on. I want to know if people can email, this is a question I had for Carl. How do, how do they do all this lockstep? I don't understand it. Like we have the Trump assassination attempt and then all of these Western governments are complete in lockstep on the narrative they want to say to the public. The lockdown was the same thing. When it comes to 5G and all that, it's all the same. How are they so coordinated behind the scenes? Well, there used to be 60 news agencies in the world. 60. There's five now. So they got all the news, everything, all streamlined. Eh? All the platform. But all these puppets, politicians, they all, money, money. if you listen to them after the Trump assassination, it was quite revealing. They all basically said the same thing. They were denying the assassination attack, and they were trying to say, oh, this was sick, or whatever, and they had the same message. How is it so lockstep? You see, there's things behind the scenes we don't know, right? There has to be. That's why they keep us well distracted. Yeah, right? I'm just letting you know. All right, I think, uh, I think we're going to shut it down now. Yeah, we could go all night, folks. I just wanted to go with the message of encouragement that I know that I always feel there's one way out of this, and that is by relying on our faith. And don't ever give up on the power of prayer, though there always is that one perfect option. the social world, my friends. Thank you very much. Yes. Great. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. I think uh, we all learned a lot tonight. Uh, go to Stephen's website, emergingglobalrealities.com. He's got a lot of blog posts on there, videos, much like uh, he did here tonight. Uh, and uh, feel free to sign up for our newsletter. We're going to send out some more information from Stephen through that newsletter. So, uh, other than that, thank you for coming. Have a great evening. Yeah, we're on the fourth. Yeah, we're on the